With that, we'll wrap up the positivity, overlap, common support assumption. Those are all the different names of it. And move on to the next important assumption, which is no interference. The no interference assumption means that my potential outcome, which could feasibly be a function of the treatments for all of the other units, all of the other individuals in the population, 1 through n, is actually only a function of my own treatment. Okay, so that's this equality that we have here where we end up with just yi ti. Graphically, you could think of this as there being potentially many parents for yi. And I'll give the example of, say the treatment is that I get a dog, and my outcome is my happiness. So I want to see what the causal effect of me getting a dog is on my happiness. You could imagine that my friends getting dogs could affect my happiness as well, because maybe our dogs are more likely to go on a play date, it can increase my social interaction with my friends, say. And what the no interference assumption is saying is that my happiness is not a function of my friends getting dogs. It's only a function of me getting a dog. With that, we can move on to the final important assumption, which is called consistency. Consistency is just that if the treatment, capital T, takes on a specific value, little t, this implies that the outcome that we observe is the potential outcome, y, t. This may seem like an assumption that is obviously going to be satisfied. However, it's not the case. People write whole papers about why this assumption is so important to ensure it's satisfied. And to give you an example of this, consider that t equals 1 means I get a dog, and t equals 0 means I don't get a dog. So it's the same example as the previous slide. Say that if I were to get a golden retriever, I would observe y equals 1. I would be happy. And this is when I'm taking the treatment. I'm getting a dog. But if I were to get a different dog, a chihuahua, say, I would observe y equals 0. I would be unhappy. And this is the same value of treatment. It's still t equals 1. In some sense, this means that the potential outcome, y1, is not well defined. This is because I'm observing a different potential outcome, y1, depending on, you know, exactly how I get t equals 1. This is an example of a violation of the consistency assumption. Another phrase for violating this aspect of the consistency assumption is known as no multiple versions of treatment. So here we had multiple versions. We had a golden retriever and a chihuahua, were different versions of t equals 1. 